All right, well, we are at the uh, Walnut Canyon National Monument. I came here last year. I'll put a link in the description below of the trip I did with that. I got a lot more detailed about uh, some of the uh, formation of this area and why the Indians ended up in this area. So, uh, see the uh, canyon down there behind us? We'll be walking down into that. But uh, this is a very cool place, and uh, Jennifer didn't get to come last year, so we're in the area. I said, let's go check out Walnut Canyon. By the time this is done, probably going to both wish we hadn't. It's a one-mile round trip, 293 stairs. <laughs> yeah, and, it's, and you feel every one of them coming back up. But anyway, let's uh, head on down into the canyon and see what's up. Oh, yeah, and this is just outside of Flagstaff, just east of Flagstaff, Arizona, right off I-40, about three miles off I-40. So if you're in the area and you like this kind of stuff, come check it out. See, there are a lot of stairs. What'd you say there were? 293. Oh, it sure feels like more than that last time I was here. But this was all done by the Conservation Corps. Uh, during the depression and uh, again in my last one that I did uh, tells the story of how so many people ended up here they had a volcanic event in the Flagstaff area where the uh, natives were farming and doing have been living up there for a long time and once those events made that uh, not uninhabitable, but certainly hard to survive. They started moving down here into Walnut Canyon. And uh, they would have to, they were farming up on top up there. So they would have to get up. You can see the dwellings over there. And they're on this side of the canyon as well. And they would farm up above us. But every day, they would have to go up there on top to go to work and go down to the bottom in the creek to get water. Uh, very, very tough life. And uh, well, they made it work, though. Pretty much straight across from the uh, lower dwellings over on the other side that you can see there. And I love that uh, water sound from a rushing creek. Got some little waterfalls down below us. All right, gonna come this way. Some of the uh, actual dwellings. You can see how they used these overhangs to do this, and they would have been walled in there a little bit. Okay, that's where we came down. As you can see, these these weren't very roomy, but they probably prov provided enough protection, obviously. And then you can see over there on this side of the canyon, these stretch all the way around. and then over on the other side as well. And something I really didn't even notice before last time I was here, Jennifer just pointed out all the cool uh, formations in the rock there. That looks like uh, volcanic flows or something like that. All you uh, geologists, if I'm wrong or right, let me know in the comments below. All right, coming up on another section here that has some of the rock still in front of it and uh, Jennifer was pointing out a minute ago how tough the mortar is that they put all this together with uh, I know some of this has been recreated but much of it is in its original form these people knew what the, they knew what they were doing one of the other things about this canyon is that this side was generally in shadow 
and had more held more moisture because of that the other side was exposed to the sun a lot more and was much drier which gave it a completely different uh, wildlife and vegetation uh, this is more of a high desert forest like it is around uh, Flagstaff and another thing this uh, uh, Walnut Canyon I believe is about 7,500 feet elevation but then that's more of the desert scrub chaparral type junipers that uh, are typical of this part of the desert Jennifer had asked uh, how they knew to come here. That's a good question. I really don't know and I ever there's there's this snow that's left. I, and I just assumed that probably as they hunted in the area there were uh, people who knew about these uh, overhangs. Maybe they used them to stay out of the rain when they were hunting. or who, I don't know. But uh, I'm sure one of these things will tell us. I do know that there were two uh, bands of natives who kind of fought over this place. I see. I know I talked about that in my last video, but I'll see if I can find something on that now. Well, they have these uh, informational things along the trail. And we're talking about those rock formations and me and my total lack of knowledge of geology. These are actually uh, sandstone that was just eroded over time in these uh, in these patterns by water and wind it says here that uh, most of these rooms didn't house people they were used to store supplies food and water and they could store up to a hundred day water supply without much difficulty using large pottery vessels in the abundant storerooms found along the cliffs that one right there that looks like a, a nice place to live. It's got some room in it. But obviously these smaller ones would have been for storage. But uh, this whole place is just fascinating. It really is. And see, here they have a little doorway leading from one room into another. And uh, so Jennifer said that these people must have been tiny. And uh, I can't speak to that but it's probably true. We went to the uh, ruins, the, I can't remember what they're called now, Wakapiti ruins, something like that. Out the other side, north of here, a few years ago, and those things, the entryways and everything, they were just absolutely tiny. Uh, this was a pretty cool walk. And uh, remember, these trails are the ones I was talking about having been built hacking out the stairs these these trails were all done by the uh, conservation corps and uh i talked more about it in my other video about how many people there were here at one time and how long it took them to do this i didn't look into all that but I, as i said i will put that uh 1933 1933 i knew that it was during the depression i read it up there but uh dollar a day and people complain about having to work for twenty dollars an hour now but anyway it was pretty extensive and you can see still not a lot of snow but on the wooded areas over there on the shady they say this is the shady side of course now we're turning back the other way so that kind of becomes the shady side as we go around this loop here these rooms here were used for a habitation and again you can see how small these doors are I would say that's probably no more than three feet tall and 18 or 20 inches wide but the way the rock curved over on top of them they built these little chimney things here and you can see that there's still stain from the smoke coming out of there
and they weren't huge but uh having them small helped them stay warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer And uh, for those of you who saw the one I did up here last year, you'll remember this is where my phone crapped out and did not get to finish. Actually, the touring and the walk back up to the top, and look at this, where they carved out the side of this to make this trail. A lot of work. My goodness, a lot of work these men did. But uh, yeah, I was almost done and my phone just cracked out. I got it to work again long enough to shoot a couple of trains up around Flagstaff. Then I had to go into Flagstaff and get a new phone, which is this one. And I missed a lot of things also on that uh, on that uh, trip because I knew my phone was giving out on me, so I was turning it off quite a bit to salvage what I did have. I don't have to do that today. And uh, come up here, watch your step cactus right there come along and hit your leg out and go oh and fall off the other side and it is a long way to the bottom see all the pox in this rock looks really cool You're a geology freak or a geology student or just like that kind of stuff what a great place to come in uh, and check out these formations and as many of you know in my battle with covid when i came up here last year that was my first real first real test of my body and my lungs post-COVID. And I did it then. I can certainly do it today. And this area, I remember when uh, people first started coming down here, white men, and we all know what white men like to do, especially back then, was search for treasure. And they destroyed so much history through here just by knocking these walls down, digging things up, trying to find something that they could go sell. And, uh, you know, it's easy for us with hundreds of years of hindsight to say that uh, we wouldn't have been the same kind of buttholes that those people were, but chances are we would have been. I would have been, you would have been, and uh, it's just the way things were. More dwellings over there. Just the work that they had to put in to getting to these places. You can see over there, whoops, that there are actually two levels. There's some up there. And then more down, there they are, there, and then down below it. Just a, God. 
What a lot of work. Okay. Now we get to start going up again. Yeah. I'm not going to leave this on because I don't want you all to hear me gasping for breath. All right. Well, this is where my camera crapped out last time. And we're down here. And we started out up there. That's the visitor center. And you can see the trails we're going to have to go back up. But hey. Good for your body, good for your soul, and get to see some really cool stuff through it all. Right now that we've come around this curve here, you can see that there were actually three levels of habitation at one time. There's an upper level, center frame there, the mid level there, and then down over there are some lower level things very 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 cool let's see the creek way down there heading back up the hard climb and uh, I can tell you now that this is a lot easier this year than it was last year I'm in much better shape uh, I'm also not wearing winter clothing or my boots. I can still feel the elevation, but uh, I had to stop, I think three times from right there. We just started up there. I had to stop three times before I got to the top last time. I actually feel pretty good right now. This dry air is wiping Jennifer's nose out, <laughs> poor thing. There's one place that you breaks. Hey, Dad. Not from up here, okay. Now from up here, you can see the trail down there, right in front of us splits off and it goes that's called the island and it goes around that and that's where we made the 180 degree turn was on the other end of that it's uh, really cool let me come around this side of it here and back up all right well that will conclude our tour of Walnut Canyon National Monument it almost killed Jennifer uh, my legs are tired, but I didn't really lose my breath this time like I did last time and have to be asked by teenage girls if I was going to make it. So uh, it was. It's this place is so cool. If you're ever in the Flagstaff area and you have a couple hours, I highly recommend this. There's signs on I-40 tell you where to get off. It's such a such a cool place. I recommend it in the spring or the fall. In the winter, it's really cold. In the summer, it's really hot. So uh, try to catch it then, but do try to catch it. All right, well, these are the URLs to my PayPal and to my Patreon account. If you can help support the channel that way, I'd really appreciate it. Well, uh, we went up to the Northern Arizona Museum, and uh, I read some of the reviews on it, and everybody seemed to say that it was okay, but it wasn't great, and it cost 15 bucks a piece to get in. And we're not being chintzy, but, uh, I don't know. Seemed like a lot for a kind of a standard museum. I wish this one was open. It isn't. This is called the Pioneer Museum. Looks kind of like the Pioneer Village in Bakersfield that we have, except that uh, it's not nearly as big. But, but for some reason, it's closed. Uh, who knows? Perhaps they couldn't get uh, any more volunteers like a lot of museums like happened with a lot of museums after COVID they simply 
lost their volunteers and people just didn't come back. Uh, cool uh, uh, Malay type locomotive here. We'll get up there and look at that a little closer. But this building was originally from 1908 to 1938 a hospital for the indigent. And uh, it is a really cool building. I'm really bummed out that they're not open. See, I would have paid 15 bucks to see this. This is really cool. But, uh, all right, well, this is a Baldwin. I don't know, it, there's no other, there's no information about it. Uh, it is a Baldwin number 12. Uh, there's no, like I said, no specific information on it other than this was used in a logging railroad in the area. And uh, this is the smallest articulated Malay type that that I've seen. I think it's really cool. Uh, it's not restored. Uh, I don't mean to just run in condition, but uh, the rods are all painted black. Everything that should be chrome is it's just all painted black with white trim. But it still looks really, really cool. Again, everyone knows I'm not that conversant with uh, locomotives. I love steam locomotives, but I'm still not that conversant with them. And so I'm not sure what these uh, pieces, these tanks here on the side, I see them on a lot of locomotives, but don't know exactly what they're for. The drivers on this appear to be about 36 inch drivers, something in that range. All right, well, you can see inside it here. The seats are no longer in it, but all the uh, equipment to run it and valves and the firebox. This looks like, I don't know, this looks like it was probably an oil burner. Looking at the tender. Not sure what that uh, little crow's nest there would have been for. But it uh, would have had uh, piping that connected the tender to the firebox. And they could have kept their eye on the fire right there. Southwest Lumber Mills. Uh, I didn't really know, I'm not familiar with the Flagstaff area as far as its history really, but evidently uh, Jennifer and I stopped at a place called Picture Canyon earlier and uh, said that there was pretty extensive logging railroad operations up there. There's an old trestle, but after doing Walnut Canyon, we really weren't in the mood to do a lot of walking and hiking anymore. But here's an old Santa Fe caboose. Uh, let's go up and look at that. All right, well, if you'll be able to see, this actually looks like uh, what uh, I think they call these combination cabooses or something, but these were used for the, the train crew. They could also have passengers in these. You see seating right there. That is not standard for any caboose I was ever in, all three or four of them, as far as the ones I saw when I was working. You see the desk there where the conductor would have done his paperwork all right well i stopped at the harley shop here in belmont arizona and the tracks run right next to it so i thought i might as well get myself another train kcs couple of kcs nice concepts for you evidently they're having a lot of problems with uh, burglary in this so if you're around this area and you see people messing around here that you don't think ought to be messed around here, call the RMCC number on the side of the signal cabin. I'll let these folks know.
control point we're at here is Belmont, and that is about halfway between Williams and Flagstaff. Beautiful area, as you can see. train for you on the Arizona road trip. Looking out over Flagstaff, we are at the Lowell Observatory. Going to go up and check out the Clark Telescope. Okay, we are inside the, where the Clark Telescope is at the Lowell Observatory. They use those, this top rotates, the top of it does the dome, and they use these tires to accomplish that. I don't recall when this was built. I think it was in the early 1900s. Very cool, very cool. Cool. We're looking at the star Rigel. It's uh, overcast all around us, really, and they're predicting clouds later tonight. So we came here first. And uh, not much of the... Uh, Sky is visible right now as far as get to look at things. So Rigel was one of the brighter stars in the skies and we did get to look at that. All right. Look, this side of the telescope, this is just, God. Anybody who knows me personally knows how much I love astronomy and I have my own telescope even though I haven't used it in a long time because living in Bakersfield is not conducive to good astronomy or any astronomy of any kind really. All right. Outside now, this is ground level there. Looking up, and there is the uh, opening of the dome, and that is the end of the telescope. Looking out at Rigel, <laughs> uh, which is right there, that bright star you can see right in the center of the frame by the edge of the tree. Cool. And again, looking out over Flagstaff. And I don't know why they're looking at Rigel. They're talking about it being cloudy, but as you look up here, there is Orion. The Orion Nebula is right in there. Oh, it's clear as a bell. This is the Rotunda Museum. We're going to go inside and see what's in here. That's cool. Alright, this is one of... I guess this was, Clyde Tombaugh was the guy who discovered Pluto. This is not the telescope with which he discovered Pluto. I think it is still in the, the small observatory where he did that. But uh, there is Mr. Tombaugh. And that is the telescope with which he discovered Pluto. Percival Lowell's own handwriting right there. The notes that Clyde Tombaugh made in his search for Pluto. 
This is the blink comparator that was used to discover Pluto. And they use these for a lot of other things too. They put one plate on the right, one on the left, and then switch it over and see if they can find any difference in the movement in the star fields. And Pluto being very distant would not, wouldn't have appeared as anything other than another star in the background. The only difference was they found they figured out that it was moving. Got this luminescent sidewalk. Because it is dark up here, except for the headlights shining up here. It's like somebody's yeah, yes. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Alright, this is the I can't hardly see it, but this is the small observatory where Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto. Sometimes you can see it's like the difference between the moon and the ice and coming And that was done upstairs. Okay. And this is this is a 13 inch scope, right? Yes, yeah, 13 inch this is, uh, refractor. This is the 13 inch refracting telescope that Clyde Tombaugh discovered, used to discover Pluto or to prove its existence. He was pretty certain that it existed. Yeah, I mean, you know, mathematical calculations really showed that it was it was out there now. What they were kind of searching for was much larger than what they actually found, and that's just because at the time we had no idea about other outer solar system objects like the Kuiper Belt. Uh -huh. So uh, it uh, was a little bit trickier to find, but once they started looking for its motion rather than directly like with their eyeballs, it became a lot easier. <laughs> cool. Another end piece for something I didn't have an end piece for. I actually did shoot more video that night, but it was just too dark and it didn't uh, come out. That was when we were up with uh, all the telescopes and uh, up on the uh, observation platform. And uh, so I tried, but uh, it didn't work out. So this is going to be the end piece for that. If you like stars, if you like astronomy, if you like learning, if you like science, the Lowell Observatory is a really good place to go. A lot of people complain because it is a little bit pricey, but uh, it's really cool. If you're an expert astronomer, you're going to know a lot of the things they talk about already. Uh, I don't consider myself an expert, but I've been an amateur astronomer for a long time, but I still enjoy it. I've been, I think that was the fifth time that I've been to the Lowell, and I've enjoyed it every time. There's always something different to uh, check out. So if you haven't been to the Lowell Observatory and you're going to be in the Flagstaff area or the, even Williams is only a half an hour away, uh, go check out the Lowell Observatory. Uh, go check out the Lowell Observatory. It's really cool. All right. You already saw my uh, PayPal and Patreon. If you can help support the channel that way, I'd really appreciate it. Keep shooting me the ideas. Drop in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motopoet59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe, click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. We'll see you all tomorrow.